John here guys and today we are finally doing the build up of my budget build. The day couldn't have come at a worse time man. I was flat broke. I only had eight bucks. This was going to take some careful budgeting and maneuvering. With the Team Black Sheep Source 1 frame and this whole entire build comes in at only $135. That's right, $135. That's all it costs to be able to build your first drone or a spare drone or a second or third or fifth or twelfth drone. Uh, and of course that is excluding the GoPro Session 5 camera that is uh, on top of here. The other notable thing is that in conjunction with my new 3D printing series, all of the 3D printed parts on this drone were printed by me, by my Ender 3 printers. That includes the micro camera mounts that I printed here. Instead of using the sidewall plates, I prefer to use a micro camera, and I'm also going to go over that. I printed this GoPro holder right here, and I also printed all of these very nice arm guards right here. Now, this is a really beefy package. And I was surprised at just how durable and tank like this thing is. I can see why it is so popular with budget beginner enthusiasts and experienced enthusiasts alike. Let's go over the build quickly um, just so that you can get a sense of all of the inexpensive parts on here. Of course, it is the Team Black Sheep Source 1 frame, which is $26. It is the Diatone Mamba. 30 by 30 stack that goes all the way up to 6S. That is $42. I have the um, camera up here, which is the Foxeer Micro Aero Pro. That's about $18 camera. I have back here the AKK Oscars backpack. Um, also will work, will be the AKK Race. Those are all about nine to 10 bucks. Uh, for a receiver, I'm using the XM Plus receiver. Uh, which is an FR Sky, it's about $12. And then I'm just using a linear dipole antenna because when you're learning, when you're flying by yourself, this type of antenna is totally fine and it only costs about a dollar or two. So I wanted to keep this exceptionally low priced. For the motors, I'm using the Emax Eco motors. Finally, these are the 2207 variety. That's the size I prefer. That seems to be a little more popular with racing and I wanted to have it be a freestyle that I was somewhat still familiar with the feel of it. And I'm using the 2207. I believe these are the 1700 KV. They're the 6S versions. That's why I'm running 6S on this. And then prop wise, I went with the HQ 5 by 4.3 V1S. It's a very lightweight, low pitch prop because I am putting 6S on this. I did put a little bit of a throttle cut, about a 92%. Uh, and so far, 6S has been fine. I just used the included small capacitor that this thing has come with, um, and it has been no problem even carrying the extra weight of this GoPro. So when you add all of these very inexpensive parts up, I expected to have something a little bit more like my first build that I did, which was a lot of knockoff parts. Um, this really doesn't complain any, uh, contain any bootleg or knockoff parts. The open source, um, TBS Source 1 frame, that's why it's called Source, because it's an open source design, is really, really good. It's quality carbon. The top and bottom plates are much thicker than what you get on some of those other clone frames. And so for a very cheap price, you're actually cheaper than a lot of those frames. Um, you can get something that's actually durable. And there's other 3D printed parts available. You can get a little chin bumper right here that'll help from any front end impacts. I'll probably will add one of those. Um, the weight is not super light, especially including the GoPro. I'll put the weight on the screen right here. And it does perform a little heavy, but it's amazing in 2020 just how good the Betaflight software is, just how good you can make even the most inexpensive um, components perform. Um, this frame is really outstanding. It has replaceable individual arms. Look how thick and beefy they are. They are um, much thicker than a racing frame, but they're actually somewhat nice and thin as far as a um, freestyle frame goes. And that allows you to still cut through the air pretty nicely. As far as build tips, I'm using the Tessa 
cloth tape on there really makes it look nice and clean because even though you're going with a budget build budget design does not mean that you have to have it looking cheap this actually looks pretty premium that tbs source frame with the individual arms has the sandwich arm design so that these arms are not wiggling anywhere um it's so rigid so you have a lot of the rigidity that you would get on uh, something like a unibody plate but with the flexibility and replaceability of individual arms. So the kind of the best of both worlds. The soft pad that it comes with at the top has really worked great for keeping those batteries. I do run dual battery straps on here typically. And again, the cap, this is gonna get some heat shrink on it. I just didn't do that before I did my first couple of maiden flights. So I put about five, six, seven packs on this thing uh, with a GoPro on it and it's so good. It's, it's unbelievable how decent this FPV $18 camera is these days. There's a couple of other options if you wanted to go Runcam. The Runcam Nano 2 would work just as well, and it's similarly priced at about $18. Bucks. Um, I was a little bit skeptical on how the Mamba was going to perform on 6S. Supposedly the V1s um, were a little sketchy there, but I had no issues at all. And from what I have heard... The V2s are totally, totally fine to be able to run 6S on. So that is really encouraging. Um, these motors are not the most powerful in its class, but at 1099 each, these Emacs motors are really a bargain. Um, so much better than what I could have made even a few years ago. Um, and the thing is, there are two schools of thought when it comes to freestyle. There's ultra light, super powerful per weight ratio, which is quite, kind of what I like. My Armatan Marmot build would be an example of that because I'm using huge 2407 motors. This is kind of the other school of thought where you have a little bit um, of heft per power, but that extra weight. Um, so people like Ladrib or maybe Mr. Steel like to fly with something that is, some of those guys like little, more weight some of them like a little less weight when you have a little more weight you can really get those nice smooth curves that exceptional precision um, and then some of that momentum that you only get by having a heavier quad will allow you to do certain maneuvers that are much harder on a lighter setup um, all in all though guys i remember when i first started you know the 99 dollars build was like the hot thing that was something that uav futures put out a few years ago and it was an amazing sense of accomplishment that first time you have something that you created with your own hands lift up off of the ground but the components that you had available at that time let's just not mince beat around the bush they were not the best a lot of them were kind of garbage and they burned up pretty easily the motors were super dingable they would bend so easy the camera was pretty much junk you know all of that stuff this is absolutely a respectable build that you can comfortably safely carry around the extra weight of this gopro on 6s um, you'll be com completely future proof um yes my arm my marmont build performs better than this my bang god build that i'm reviewing right now performs better than this they do but they cost three times more uh, almost uh at least two times more and that is super impressive now i know if you're doing the mental math you may be calculating in your head wait a second john uh that price doesn't seem like 135 dollars. that seems more like 155 dollars maybe well, you should be following the FPV sales alerts and you should be getting all of your components on sale. So I pretty much deducted about 10% from the price of this uh, because that's the average sell. I really suggest if you're going to get in this hobby, pay attention to the sales, buy your spares, your extras, plan your builds ahead. When the sales are on, buy. Um, I had these components sitting around for like eight months because I bought them all on sale. I knew that I was going to have to do my budget build at some point for the channel and I just got busy. Uh, but then when I finally got around to it, um, everything was ready to go. Um, what I don't suggest you do is stockpile super high, you know, depending on how, how much you run, how much stuff you go through. Don't buy 20 VTXs, 
because a new one might come out. Don't buy 20 cameras, buy three, four, you know, buy however many you think you're gonna need uh, to replace. I usually buy cameras five or 10 at a time. Receivers, I'll buy 15 or 20 at a time because you buy them on sale. You take the maximum amount of mileage for your dollar, but everybody's different. Depends on how many things you fly, what different setups you fly, how much you crash. Do you go to the Bando? If you do, you probably replace things like motors and top plates and cameras a little bit more. Um, so let's get to the footage. What do you guys think? What are you gonna do for your build? Stay tuned, I'm gonna do another video following up after this, comparing this to the most popular bind and fly freestyle um, out on the market right now, which is the Nazgul 5. And we're gonna say, should you buy it or build it? Thanks guys. Bye.